Hi, I'm John Keisner, and you're watching The Natural Farmer. So what you see here is the top of our 6,000 square meter food forest here in the Mediterranean. If you check out our website at johnkeisner.com, you'll see that we are located on the northeast coast of Sicily, which is basically right in the middle of the Mediterranean basin. This particular food forest contains uh, almost 150 fruit and nut trees of almost 100 varieties. It's about three years old. It's got a water harvesting system. Uh, I'm standing in the bottom of one of the swales. That's why there's no weed growth really in this area because they're standing water for the most part of the winter here. Uh, but all the other areas get the benefit of that water and then they grow up nicely. Really happy with the amount of ground cover. I, I practice a combination of natural farming and permaculture, which means that I allow nature to decide the ground cover. I bring the moisture and she takes care of the rest, so to speak. The biodiversity here in Sicily is amazing. But I just wanted to take you through basically our food forest, this, this back part of what we're doing here, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of, of how we've laid it out. Uh, we've got, like I said, swales running through the land. That was the first thing that we did. And then we've made paths. So you can kind of see some of these paths running through here. Um, on both sides and then we come up through the paths we got another swale there we cross over the swale we come up and up and up and up through these paths in our food forest you can see I just love these early morning weeds <laughs> with the light shining over them but you get really easy circulation all the way through this food forest and it creates such a amazing little environment just to be in and to take your kids around in and um, just spend time here and recharge get out of the house and recharge and as you can see here things are very very natural and this really saves time energy effort even money because instead of meticulously I mean, look at this what's grown in here this is lemongrass down in here Got these wonderful little yellow little flowers coming and it, it's just a very satisfying place to spend time because you get these natural expressions happening all around you and here in the mediterranean the key is water 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 and these these weeds are not only beautiful and pollinating and creating uh, more density on the land but they're protecting from the sun at this point and then when we chop them and drop them they'll enrich the soil again and again and again every year and then when we stimulate that with animals it goes even further in enriching the soil so i mentioned animals this is how we keep our chickens the animals stimulate uh, they benefit from the insects from the plants uh, the plants benefit from their stimulation uh, here's a gelso which is a mulberry tree white mulberry it's uh, got a fruit set it's ripening up just a little ecosystem functioning, but we do move them all around the food forest. I mentioned the swales before. Uh, I just love these flowers, all this growth around here, spontaneous growth. This is a pond. We've got six of them on the land here. None of them have liners. They're all just held, water's held by clay. This is a, a dry rock wall. I'll get back to more of these later. This is a temporary storage tank. This pond won't last all summer. While the water's here, we pump some of it up into this tank, like during the winter, fills and drops and fills. We keep that later for irrigating these young trees in the dry, dry, dry six months that we get here. So that's another particular thing about the Mediterranean. But the, the life boost, the humidity boost, the activity boost that these ponds give and their edges give are really, really, really wonderful wonderful things i highly recommend them they won't stay around all summer and that's just you know was expected when we made them but with their limited presence even they completely change this landscape for the better so now it's time for a quick coffee break
So now we have a couple of minutes. I'll take you over here and we'll have a little chat. So I want to have this talk on this bench because I want to emphasize the importance of this bench. This bench is essential and its placement is essential. Not because it's on this spot and that spot, but because it's in this food forest. And since it's in this food forest and I wait for my coffee and I sit and I look at the view, I can appreciate the work that I've done. I can stop, find the balance between work and rest. I can look around. I can think about the next steps that I want to take. Maybe I write them down on a list. In permaculture, uh, the rule of thumb is we reflect for 100 hours before we work for one hour. Now that's a bit exaggerated, but the point is we do things in a thoughtful way. When we do things in a thoughtful way, we inevitably conserve time, we conserve energy, we conserve frustration, we conserve money, we conserve resources, we conserve waste, we conserve a lot of things. Our actions count for something, right? Meaningful actions with reflection rather than meaningless repetition or maybe imitation or whatever. That's what we're aiming for. Um, I think my coffee's ready. So I mentioned earlier the dry rock wall over here. This is a uh, dry rock staircase with the weeds, everything growing up through it. Uh, really, really lovely, happy with the way that turned out. We've got another one over here I'll show you. Here's the other one. You can see this, this stone is a good sized stone, huh? They're actually kind of dry boulder staircases and they were moved with a baby excavator. Um, a friend of mine named Nico, fantastic excavator operator. And um, it was abandoned rock pile here and we didn't know what to do f with it for, for years. And that's part of this process as well is not everything in a master plan is gonna turn out as you want. Um, sometimes there's, we want to leave room for spontaneity, we want to leave room for some adjustments, and sometimes you have a big question mark and you don't know what to do for a while, but then you just kind of stay patient and things work out. So I'll show you the rest of this and continue the story. So back from the staircase, things move around on this bend. We keep these pretty clean, okay? Obviously, temporary water storage tank pond in the middle. We had an abandoned pile of rocks. When they opened up the land here and down below, they had to take out a bunch of boulders, these boulders. Didn't know what to do with them, so they threw them on here. We tried to barter with them. They're not valuable enough uh, to be really of any worth to anyone here. They're not pristine rocks. And so for some years, I had no idea what to do with them. It would cost money to take them away. I knew they could serve something. We dug this pond over here, we discovered some rocks, started stacking them up. And then the aha moment came and we decided to do some dry boulder walls here. We're very happy with the way it turned out. This tank will go. There'll be space for structure up here, parking, etc. It's got a view of the sea. But these dry boulder walls really add a, a whole nother dimension to the land that wasn't there before. So layer after layer, we add these things in and it really enriches the experience here. I'll take you down below at the entrance. So I'm walking down the gravel driveway toward the entrance of this back part of the land, the food forest, and we've got again this dry boulder wall, which has now grown up quite a bit. We don't keep this as polished. We don't keep it as clean. We could, we're gonna make some decisions about that. But when a person now, before it was just a slope, now when a person enters, they get this big, like a prow of a ship boulder encountered. It sets a good boundary here. And you've got that sweeping line up, and then the pond is hidden back there. We're gonna have trees grow up, and you've obviously got these wonderful wildflowers growing here. And as you can hear, there's the street. We live in a residential neighborhood. So how to negotiate these decisions when you're surrounded by three neighbors takes precision. It's not just out in the middle of nowhere where you can do this or do that and nobody's really affected. To be really think about the gestures. We got a pond right there just on the other side of this person's wall. That's got to be precise, got to be done well. These rock walls have added so much to this land 
in just a simple usage of what was already there. They would have cost a lot of money to import, would have cost a lot of energy to import. They were there, we used them. It didn't occur to us how to do it immediately, but over time we figured out how to use them and we're really, really quite happy with the results now. And of course, no food forest visit would be complete without showing a little bit of food, at least. <laughs> um, these are the almonds. Uh, they're almost ready. Let me see if one of these, this is my favorite thing to do with my daughter in the food forest. We walk around and she says, that an almond. And I break them open. And inside there's a little tender almond that I give to her. We'll see if it's jelly still in time. Yep. Still too early. We've had a very late spring, but kids, fruit trees, learning, growing up together is a, a amazing combination. Feel very blessed and grateful for that. So um, it's all here, ready to happen. So the last thing I want to end with here, and um, I hope it's not too funny to have my coffee here, but I do have the coffee. I want to finish it since we started it together. Um, I want to emphasize the point that all of the stuff that you've seen here was done by one guy. That's me. I designed it, executed it, I maintain it. I don't have a team of people out here, volunteers or otherwise, okay? I don't have a landscaper. This is possible because I knew that that would kind of be the situation here from the beginning. And so I designed it that way. You can design it that way. You can design low maintenance by working with nature. You can design these things. And then with the help of an excavator operator, we were able to realize these things, okay? That's not to say you can't invite people. Absolutely, invite people and enjoy the land with as many people as you possibly can. But what we really learned during the pandemic was the fact that since we had such independence set up in the design from the beginning, that even in a pandemic, we're still okay even when nobody can travel, nobody can help us. That's important, makes a big difference in terms of stability, in terms of independence. That's the first thing. Second thing is we have not yet used any city water or any well water. We've only used rainwater here. I did that because I used to work in India and I used to see bore wells 300 meters deep dry in certain areas, abuse of groundwater. And I made a decision many years ago that I was going to make a demonstration site even in the Mediterranean where it's dry where we're not going to take any groundwater we're not going to take any city water so the ponds pump up into the holding tanks that gets used later on okay when I finally get a building permit and have a big cistern here those temporary tanks will disappear sustainability, independence, um, comfort. I won't lie to you, it's a lot of work in the beginning, like raising a kid, right? Raising a child takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of dedication, a lot of love, a lot of patience. You put that energy into it, and then slowly they gain independence, they grow up. And as the system stabilizes, as the trees grow up and the shade comes, et cetera, et cetera, you get, that's why I'm drinking a cup of coffee right here, because you get the time to chill out a little bit and stop running and running and running and stabilize and benefit from that stability. So we're very happy with this. Um, you know our website now, contact me, write me down below. Uh, when things loosen up, come visit. It's a pleasure for me to do this work. It's a pleasure for me to to give this information to you. So um, I think that's it. My name, is, um, my name is John Keisner. This has been another episode of The Natural Farmer. I'm really happy that you're here and I hope to see you again real soon.